Okay, so in this video, we're going to talk about another type of simple machine. And this time, that simple machine will be the inclined plane. Now, this simple machine is used to make it easier to lift loads from a lower position to a higher position. Now, this is in contrast with just lifting a load directly and directly upwards. So why are inclined planes preferred over that option? Well, that's because inclined planes move the load along a longer path, but less effort is therefore required to move the load along that path since work is done only against a component of gravity. So let's consider this a little bit further. We have in this illustration some object with a string attached and it's being pulled up the inclined plane. Now, if we compare that to taking the same object and lifting it directly upwards, what do we notice? Well, we notice the distance that it will travel to get to the top will be less. However, it will be working directly against the force of gravity, which requires more effort. Now again, comparing this to the inclined plane, well, in this case, because it's at an angle and not being pulled up and therefore directly against the force of gravity, it's acting only against a component of gravity. So this means it requires less effort, although the distance will increase. And for this reason, inclined planes are a very useful simple machine, and there are many examples of them found in everyday life, with some common examples including truck ramps, wheelchair ramps, and curb ramps. So you can see many examples of inclined planes in real life typically are called a ramp of some kind. And like other types of simple machines, they're used to provide the aforementioned mechanical advantage. So the mechanical advantage in an inclined plane is essentially just a measure of how much easier it is to move an object up the inclined plane compared to lifting it straight up. And we can express the mechanical advantage with the following expression. The mechanical advantage is equal to the length of the incline divided by the height. So we have two different examples here to consider. We have one example where the height is much larger, and we have an example where the height is much smaller. Now keep in mind, when we're talking about the mechanical advantage in the context of an inclined plane, we're talking about the advantage of moving it up the incline. So this is not to be confused with what happens when the ball rolls down this plank, for example. So with that said, again, the mechanical advantage is equal to the length divided by the height. So for the left example, where the height is larger, but the length is the same as the other option, where the height is shorter, well, that's going to have lower mechanical advantage because the denominator of this expression is larger. So we want to have as little height for as much length. This is what will maximize the mechanical advantage for an inclined plane. There are several key factors that are important to know that can affect an inclined plane, and they're all largely interrelated. So we'll start with the first one, which is the angle. So we can see an inclined plane, by virtue of it being on an incline, will be at some angle. Now, the steeper that angle, or rather the larger that angle, well then, the faster the object will accelerate. So for example, we have this illustration here, where we have the weight of the object, directly downwards, and then we have those two components. We see one component here, and we see the other here. Well, by increasing the angle, so this is to say bringing the ramp this way, we're going to have more alignment between this component, which is the one acting down the ramp, and the force of gravity. So the greater the angle, well then the greater the acceleration due to gravity's parallel component. Now the second thing to consider is gravity itself. Of course, we couldn't have provided that explanation about the angle without invoking gravity. So it's important to understand that, of course, gravity acts downwards, and it will be split into those two components, the x and the y, or the horizontal and the vertical. Now we can consider these parallel and perpendicular to the plane. So this is what's fundamentally driving motion and affecting friction. If we didn't have gravity, well then, there would be mo no motion down the ramp, and there'd be no, no, no force to oppose motion up the ramp. Now lastly, we have friction, which again, is further intertwined. 
Now friction resists motion and it's determined by the normal force and the surface's coefficient of friction. So the coefficient of friction basically refers to what the surface is made of. Some surfaces will make it harder and some surfaces will make it easier. The other factor to consider is the normal force. So we can see the normal force illustrated here in our image. This is the force that goes opposite the force down on the surface. So for example, we have the component of the weight here and normal to that force, we have the normal force. So depending on the normal force, it will have an effect on the force of friction. The larger the normal force, well then the greater the force of friction. So these are the three factors that can influence and have an effect on inclined planes and that are key to understanding these systems. We've learned about inclined planes. So first of all, an inclined plane is a simple machine that's used to make it easier to lift loads from a lower position to a higher position. Inclined planes move the load along a longer path, but less effort is required to move the load along that path since the work is done only against a component of gravity. The mechanical advantage of an inclined plane is essentially a measure of how much easier it is to move an object up the inclined plane compared to lifting it straight up. We can determine the mechanical advantage by considering the length of incline divided by the height of the inclined plane. There are three main factors that can influence or affect an inclined plane, and these include the angle, the force of gravity, and last but not least, friction.